Hi ladies. Morning, ye turkeys. You guys thirsty? We'll be back to see you guys a little bit later. Morning, little one. You gotta go back in. Come on. Let's go. There you go. Howdy, pigs. Hey, Red. How are you doing? We <clears throat> gotta get your dish. Oh. All right, lady. Are you not thirsty this morning? There you go. Howdy, Big John. Hey, buddy. You gonna let me get my your dish? Morning, piggers. Yeah. Oh, the rush. Well, you guys can eat right here if you want. Watch out. Morning, pullets. How's your pullety day going? Hiya, heifers. How's your hay? Looks good to me. And with that, it's time for breakfast. Maybe it's not quite time for breakfast yet. Ezra is telling me it's time for his breakfast. Yeah, okay. Here you go, buddy. 
Now it's time for breakfast. Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Well, today's a little bit up in the air. Depending on the weather, my hay guy might deliver the second half of my hay today. But in any case, we'll find things to do. And the first thing we have to do is move those turkeys. We gotta make some room here. This is all essential stuff, you know. Bits of wire, broken insulators, chains. You gotta have chains on your tractor. Old pieces of gates. It's all in here. We got, you know, my favorite rock. Got to carry that. Today is the turkey's first weigh-in. We're gonna see how they're doing. Kind of sprinkling a little bit out here. Uh, that's fall. We're gonna move these guys. We've been dropping pasture boxes as our broilers are starting to dwindle down. We've got two and a few left in that one and a lot of empty ones. We gotta move this one out of the way to move the turkeys over here. And that will require this thing. And you all have seen this part before we take down the fence from last week, put it up in a new spot, move the turkeys in. So we'll start up right and then we'll drop the rest. And drop the fence. Go get the trailer and hook it up. Bring it into the new pasture. All the while trying not to run over turkey. Now before we move them into the new spot we're going to weigh a small one and a big one and see where they're at and the way we do that is first we get a tear tear weight on this tote tear weight seven pounds here's a small one it's probably a hen they're always a lot smaller 23 and a half minus seven and then we do a little math so the bird, the bird in the crate weighs 23 and a half mm -hmm. minus seven pounds for the tote. 16 and a half pounds times 70 percent, point seven, because that's live weight to dress weight. We get 11 and a half pounds. So there's one that's on the small end, ready to butcher. Yeah. Now we'll try a large one. Here's a Tom. All right, stop laughing. All right. 28 pounds minus seven is 21 pounds. 21 pounds times 0.7, 14.7. These turkeys are ready to start butchering. Butcher Palooza is here. Butcher Palooza. Oh boy. Looks like we're gonna be butchering next week. Probably 75% of our turkey orders are for turkeys between 12 and 14 pounds. Most people just want smaller turkeys these days. And then we have the other 25% mostly in the 15 to 17 pound range. And then we get a few, very few, of 20 pounds to 23 pounds. So next week we'll probably take about three quarters of these, leave the rest as toms, let them grow a little bit longer, and then slaughter them. This is how we control weight for what people order we do them frozen for thanksgiving because we have one batch and we want to harvest at just the right weights for our customer according to pre-orders we'll herd these guys into their new area come on turkeys there you go peaceful turkeys Let's go guys. I think they're shyer on the Electronet because it's been so hot since I fixed the fence. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Over you go. Come on guys. And a few stragglers. Come on guys. Come on. Lots of good stuff in there. Come in you. Come on. And then we just put the rest of the fence up. Huh? Oh, now it's really raining. I didn't expect that. 
there's something I want to show you guys over here. Look at this thing. Do you think it's one of our kids old balls that got left here and is partially deflated? Well, nope, it's not. This is a puff ball and this one is huge. It's past its prime. You can't eat them, but we do eat them. Um, they are delicious. They're like an intense buttery mushroom and the key is to get them when the flesh inside is still white and it's a lot firmer than this powdery stuff. Puffballs are mis mysterious like mushrooms. We have them grow at various places in our yard and they're a delicacy, but you gotta catch them when they're at the right stage. My hay guy just called and he's gonna deliver the other half of the bales today, so I gotta move these tractors out of the barn. However, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to put the hay in the barn today because it drizzled here this morning. I don't know if it drizzled where the hay is. We'll see when it gets here, whether it's dry. And I gotta move this little super hay out of here. It hasn't been started since last winter when I plowed snow with it. And the battery's dead, so it's the old Armstrong starter. We'll see. is lost in prime. Could be air in the system. We'll see. Sometimes they get pressurized air built up in them. Listen for the hiss before you take the plug all the way out. No, no air. Very low. So we'll put some in and see what happens. lined up outside. <laughs> My hay guy delivered the first load. 12 bales load, four loads today. That'll make 96 bales total. More than enough that I need for winter. So let's put them in the barn. That's it, all my hay's in for the winter. And there's a lot of it. I have barely enough room to get the MD and the H in here, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with the Super A over there. I'll find a spot for it. Let me show you how much I got. Uh, we'll see if we can climb up here. Get to the top of the pile somehow here. Maybe up this way. 
Should be about 160 bales in here. A barn full of hay is like a garage full of full freezers or a woodshed full of firewood. It's security. It's funny how farming changes the way you think, you know. The security that we have in the woodshed and the freezers and in the barn here represents a long-term security. I remember when we used to go out shopping and we would go shopping every week and you know we had a refrigerator freezer that held very few or very little frozen food and now we're talking about storing up over a year's worth of supplies, two years worth of heat, five years worth of meat at least in the freezers if we had to feed ourselves, a year and a half, two years worth of hay here. That kind of long-term security is important these days, at least to me it is. Now I just got to figure out if I can get down the way I got up. It's like when I was a kid and I used to climb trees and then have trouble getting down. There we go. Well, that's another milestone past getting ready for winter. What's your What's your favorite thing about having a farm? Uh, I think being home with our kids when they were younger and even now when they're older, it's it's been good for that, I think. And, uh, you know, I was getting ready to go back as a nurse to work mm. when we started this mm. and you know and you may still yeah yeah i mean yeah. Yeah, yeah what's your least favorite thing about farming uh you know being outside in winter i don't really <laughs> like being cold <laughs> i think i'm about the only person who doesn't mind being out in the cold <laughs> did you ever think that you would be a farmer when you were growing up <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. And honestly, I didn't know a lot about uh, farmers or farming. I thought farming and farmers were a certain way and it was, you know, a man's world and it really wasn't for me. Oh, like and stereotype? Yeah, stereotype. stereotype. Oh my God. I don't like that stereotype at all that farming is about men and if, if their wives are on the farm, then they're the little lady helping out and cooking dinner in the kitchen, you know, that... I'm not, I'm not at all cool with that. I, I, Hillary and I have think of ourselves as equal partners in the farm and most anything I can do, Hillary can do and vice versa. I, I'd like to break that gender stereotype as much as I can. I, that really, that bugs me. Except for bailing hay, I don't do that. No. You have a relationship with the baler that I just can't possibly compete with. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like, you're on? No, I'm not going to work. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video. A uh, couple things I mentioned in the last video, I'll mention again. Phil's going to be at Farmer's Market on Saturday, and I won't be there this Saturday. I'm going to the tractor pulls, and hopefully I'm going to bring you all along with me. The second is that we have a P.O. box now. Uh, should you want to send us anything, uh, the, the P.O. box and the address is in the video description down below. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. All right? All right. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Yeah.